Hey everyone, today on Big Out Books I wanted to make a video for Nonfiction November. So this is going to be a video about some of my favorite funny works of nonfiction. And none of these books are really marketed as like humorous books. They are all about a different subject, but I just found them to be really entertaining and they all made me laugh. So hopefully you have a similar kind of strange sense of humor so that you might enjoy some of these recommendations. The first book that came to mind when coming up with this list was a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again by David Foster Wallace. I feel like after he died a lot of people started taking him very seriously and talking about him like he is this like brilliant tortured artist which then went on to annoy a lot of people who just think that he is totally pretentious. But what I feel like we don't talk about with David Foster Wallace is that he had a wicked sense of humor and that a lot of his works are just really funny and goofy and have a lot of warmth to them. So I had to mention this collection of essays, especially for the title essay, A Supposedly Fun Thing I'll Never Do Again, in which David Foster Wallace goes on a reporting mission and he takes a vacation cruise to see what cruise life is all about. And he, of course, does not have a great time, but his reporting of the situation is really hilarious. He treats everything like it's like very ominous or absurd. So I found this essay to be hilarious. And especially if you think that you're a person that you might not have the best time on a cruise, then you should definitely check this collection out. Another book that features an author trying a supposedly fun thing that they will never do again, that's definitely Hell's Angels by Hunter S. Thompson. This book was written in the 60s when the Hell's Angels motorcycle gang were very notorious. They were getting a lot of coverage in the media and Hunter S. Thompson wanted to figure out what was actually going on and whether they were actually as criminal and violent as they were being portrayed in the newspapers. So he goes undercover and joins a bike gang and the result is just a very entertaining piece of journalism because this is just a slice of life that most people will never get to experience. So it was a real fascinating look at this strange subculture from the 60s and the bikers just have this great tough attitude on life and though you can't always you know accept their violent actions I mean there were a lot of like funny silly moments in this book and also a lot of great quotes were captured in here. Unfortunately it didn't end too well for Hunter S. Thompson when the gang found out that he was a journalist they beat him up pretty badly so he feels quite bitter about the experience at the end of it but it still made for a pretty entertaining ride and it was a really funny look at like it's just a strange subculture and some real characters within the organization. Next up is Conquest of the Useless by Werner Herzog. He is a German film director and this book is a collection of his journals from around the time when he was making one of his most famous films Fitzcarraldo, which is set in the jungles of South America and is about a man who has this great dream to move a huge steamboat over a mountain to get to this new inaccessible plot of land. So basically Herzog the director also has to achieve this basically impossible task of moving the steamboat. So it's kind of like his story is mirroring the story of the protagonist of his film. Basically everything that can go wrong does go wrong while making this film. There is sickness, there are accidents, trying to survive living in this jungle, there are lead actors who are quitting in the middle of the film and then being replaced by new actors who are crazy and creating a lot of drama. There's tension working with the indigenous people of the area. Really, there's just so much that goes wrong in this book that it really shouldn't be a funny read, but it somehow does become funny because you just picture Werner Herzog speaking in his very deadpan German accent and he just has a way of phrasing things that I just find is very hilarious. So some of the lines that like stuck out to me were ones like this. I jumped out of my skin because the trees were yelling at me. Has it come to this that the trees are yelling at me? I hurled the spider to the ground thinking how banal and humiliating to die like this. At the market I ate a piece of grilled monkey. 
It looked like a naked child. I loved the dramatic descriptions of life in the jungle and how hostile he believes nature to be. I also love the title Conquest of the Useless. I mean this book is just very self-deprecating and it's not like he's very proud of himself for achieving these goals but rather he just feels like everything was useless. So you gotta love that kind of hilarious look on art and whether it even really matters in the end. Another book that also describes everything going wrong on a film set is The Disaster Artist, My Life Inside the Room, the greatest bad movie ever made by Greg Sestero and Tom Bissell. So if you haven't heard of The Room, I feel like I can't be the person that explains it to you. You really just have to like go and watch a trailer and experience what this film is like for yourself because there are no words. But people do often try to describe it as like the Citizen Kane of bad movies. So it's a cult classic. You know, it is still being screened screened in many independent theaters still to this day, uh, mainly because it is a really terrible movie, but that's terrible in a way that is like so funny that it transcends whether it's good or bad and it's just super entertaining. And this book is all about the making of this film and also about the friendship between the creator of the film, Tommy Wiseau, and one of the lead actors, Greg Sestero, and their kind of journey meeting in Hollywood, Greg trying to become a famous famous actor and of course how difficult that journey can be but really my favorite parts of this book are just on the set of the room while they're trying to make this movie happen and everything is just terrible. I found this book to be so funny. I remember reading it and laughing out loud to myself and hoping that my roommates couldn't hear me <laughs> because I thought that this book was hilarious. I mean, Tommy Wiseau, the creator of The Room, is just such a unique person. So he's just a force to reckon with. So it's fascinating to watch him and his process and everyone's horror around him as they're realizing that they're gonna be in this profoundly terrible film. Next up, I have an autobiography called My Life by Benvenuto Cellini. Now he was a pretty famous artist from Italy during the Renaissance period and this book I thought was kind of going to be like mostly boring but it ended up being deeply fascinating and hilarious because Cellini is just like some kind of compulsive liar or at least that you hope he is because there is just so much scandal and drama and absurd things happening on pretty much every page of this book that it makes for an unforgettable read. I mean nobody gets into more weird bizarre fights with people. Benvenuto is just always causing drama, he's offending people, he's defending his own honor, he's fighting with the Pope, with his patrons, with other artists. Like there's just so much drama that goes on in this book. Also Cellini is always trying to make himself look like he's like the greatest person ever. So this memoir is like so funny just because it just seems like the biggest pack of lies that I've ever read. So this book is ridiculous and outrageous, but it is also the most fun I have ever had reading a memoir. Another memoir is Rotten, No Irish, No Blacks, No Dogs, which is written by John Lydon, who's best known as the lead singer for the Sex Pistols, one of the pivotal punk bands of the 1970s and also uh, his more current band Public Image Limited. So this is a memoir looking back on his life growing up Irish and working class in England and some of the discrimination that he experienced feeling a bit like an outsider and then also what it was like you know being in that early punk movement and seeing how it all got so commercialized and so inauthentic as the years continued to go on and how the Sex Pistols fell apart so spectacularly. So Leiden is very honest and he's very like unhinged with his writing and I think that's part of where the humor comes in this book is that he's just so like unexpectedly frank about a topic and, and he really just gives his opinions. He's got lots of hot takes about what life was like at the time and, and what's happened to punk music and there's a lot of wild stories in here about Sid and Nancy and all sorts of characters from the time so this was like very funny but also very insightful so I enjoyed this rock and roll memoir a lot. 
Another book on my list about music is Fargo Rock City, a heavy metal odyssey in rural North Dakota by Chuck Klosterman, who is an author that's pretty well known for his pop culture-y pieces of nonfiction. And this is a book about him being obsessed with 80s hair metal bands and how no one else around him in the kind of farm town that he grew up in really shared this interest like he did. I actually don't remember a ton about this book. I probably read it over 10 years ago now, but I did find it very funny at the time. And actually I hate 80s hair metal bands, so I really wasn't interested in like the content of the music that he was talking about, but it's still such a universal story about like how important music is in like shaping your identity in adolescence. So I found that aspect of the book really re relatable and it was just like a really funny look at that topic. So I seem to remember really enjoying this one. Moving on to some books about history, I've got the Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King. I feel like I talk about this book fairly often on my channel because I think that is a very accessible, approachable way to start thinking about some issues between settlers and indigenous people in North America. So I think it's a great book if you're looking to learn more about that topic, but it's also just like very funny, but it's a very dark kind of humor. So Thomas King cracks a lot of jokes about the history of colonization, and they're the kind of jokes that you feel bad laughing at because the subject matter is pretty bleak and depressing sometimes. So this book is humorous, but it's not kind of funny in the way that the other ones are where you're just laughing because you're entertained. This this is like has a pretty dark edge to it, but it's a great way to learn about a very serious topic. Another historical book is Confederates in the Attic, Dispatches from the Unfinished Civil War by Tony Horwitz. So this is a book where the author is traveling to various locations in the American South, and he's trying to meet with some people who are still very interested in the American Civil War or as they call it, the war between the states, or the war of northern aggression. So these are kind of people who are on the losing end of that war and how that still impacts them to this day, or how they're still very obsessed with the idea of this war. So what I liked about this book is that though a lot of the people that he interviews are quite eccentric, and kind of strange from a northern perspective. He's really not trying to pass a judgment on these people, but he just kind of presents it as it is, and it's up for the reader to sort of decide. But I found that this book was like really entertaining. I really enjoyed when he would meet up with people that would do the historical reenactments. So people who would like spend their weekends camping out in the wilderness and dressing in historically accurate, uncomfortable costumes to recreate battle scenes from the war. So this was a pretty entertaining look at the South and how the Civil War continues to be pretty relevant in their lives. This was written in the 90s, but you can still see a lot of these issues are still quite relevant. The last two books on my list are on slightly more bookish topics. One of them is Ex Libris by Anne Fadiman, Confessions of a Common Reader. And I would say that this is not like laugh out loud, kind of slapping your knee funny, but it's just the sort of like wry, charming kind of sense of humor, especially if you're a nerd, basically, if you're someone who really loves reading, if you like knowing obscure words and you get into debates about how to catalog your books and you have serious problems restraining yourself at a secondhand bookshop, then I think a lot of the topics of these essays will appeal to you. So yeah, again, it's not like an overtly funny work, but it is still very charming and I think it put a smile on my face a lot of the time while I was reading it. So I really enjoyed this one. And lastly, I've got a pretty niche pick. This one's called Revolutions, Essays on Contemporary Canadian Fiction by Alex Good. So if you are not super interested in Canlit, I'm sorry, this book probably won't interest you. But if you are interested in the strange world of Canlit, then this book was just so much fun. And I don't think that I've laughed out loud reading literary criticism quite like I have with this book, because Alex Good is just really poking fun at the institution Canlit has 
become. So he kind of makes fun of all of the traditions of the genre of, of Canadian fiction and the insular world where these authors are really forming this like tight-knit society and it's hard for innovators or people to work outside of that. And then there's one essay in here where he goes through all the picks on this Giller shortlist for one year and though I hadn't read most of those books, hearing his thoughts on them and why he thought they were ridiculous, it was just a lot of fun. So this was some like very lively and spirited literary criticism and I had a lot of fun reading this. So that's it for my random list of nonfiction books that I have found to be pretty funny reads. I would love to hear from you in the comments if you have anything on your list list, any nonfiction that made you laugh. I think it's such a fun side of nonfiction to talk about because nonfiction can kind of seem like very serious at times because we do approach these books in order to learn more deeply about a certain topic. So it's also fun to talk about when nonfiction is just kind of goofy and something that can be entertaining and it makes us smile. So I had a lot of fun putting this list together. Um, please let me know what you enjoy in a funny nonfiction book and I will see you again next time.